This is our agent success interview here with Deb Hansen, one of the OGs that joined the Dowling Group uh, back when we first started. So Deb, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. And I know when you first joined, we're in the depths of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, so you definitely took a huge leap of faith yes. to join in Beyond and, uh, and the team here. What was the reason why you decided to kind of make a move um, you came from a big box. Typically, the big box is a definitely a security blanket mm -hmm. for a lot of agents sure is. for a brand name. What made you decide this is the right fit for you? Well, first off, the big box isn't for everybody. Um, it's not a one size fits all. And I like thinking outside the box and being in the smaller um, bubble, if you mm -hmm. will, you know, more hands on with my clients and just more personal service. And the big box don't really allow you to do that. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, let's talk numbers. You joined and year to date, you've almost increased your business in two years about 200%. There's 100% growth nearly year over year. Mm -hmm. And I know this year alone, you're up nearly another 100%. I think you're at like 88, 89. Crazy. So <laughs> typically, basically by the end of this year, that you're on track to have 300% growth in your business. Mm -hmm. What do you put a lot of that down to? Because when you first started, you were really just kind of expired, FISBO, COVID took all of that out mm -hmm. as really a, a valid lead source where you could actually get business from. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us how the teams helped you put your business on steroids. Well, really, it does come back to the team because, yes, I'm an individual, but we're also a team and we do a ton of sharing, which is so important because there's more seasoned agents, and then there's even less experience than myself. So you put us all together and we all share what's working, what's not working. Um, processes and procedures are huge. You know, coming from a, an insurance background, that's what kept us going is processes and procedures. And without beyond, it's hard to stick to that stuff. Yeah, I am known for being a bit of a systems and processes, <laughs> procedures nerd. Yeah. Um, definitely, I. I remember vividly like the first wow moment you had was the reluctancy in a way to use a transaction coordinator, which mm -hmm. we have here. Every agent yep. uses a transaction coordinator. You're a bit of a control freak. Just a little bit. Um, but then when you had your first transaction and you used the, the TC, mm -hmm. you had this epiphany moment of how much time essentially you'd saved. As yeah. Well. Absolutely, because you know when you're one person working a transaction, it's kind of hard to then let yourself go with that and then get on to the next one and on to the next one. And now it's just I can hand it over and on to the next. And it does. It makes it so much more efficient. And RTC is top notch. And I, I can remember the first thing, you're like, what do I do now? Like, go get another deal. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I think now you're like the, the epitome of what you just put like six up on the board you know like you're just <laughs> knocking stuff out of the park yeah um so diving more into the the systems and and processes and stuff do you feel that's definitely helped you um we all suffer with a bit of attention deficit disorder for mm -hmm. diagnosed non-diagnosed we get distracted right it's yes. real estate there's always a shiny new coin so yep. get distracted by how have the systems and processes the, that the teams implemented helped you stay on track and focus to essentially scale your business, grow your business 200%? Yeah. Well, I, first off, I, I would say team coaching because, like you said, every time you turn around, there's something new and shiny that you want to try. Mm -hmm. And putting it back into focus and saying, okay, well, instead of looking at all of this, let's focus on one or two things and let's get really good at that. And that's, I think, what a lot of people are missing is focusing and really getting good at one thing before you move on to the next and the next and the next. Yeah. And that is so important. And without that focus and you being the numbers guy that you are, that helps me too, because now I know where I am, which I know sounds funny. I should know where my numbers are, but sometimes I'm just so busy that I forget. Totally normal. Totally yeah. normal in the industry of people just not knowing what they're doing and how they got there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where I, I, what I enjoy as well of, of being the team lead. I'm obviously still in production, but you know, seeing how your business has grown, but also kind of 
knowing the roadmap of how you've done that mm -hmm. has definitely obviously helped you be like, right. I get it now. I get why you're doing that. Before you're like, this guy's freaking crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yep. the Tom Ferry coaching that, that we have has definitely yep. clearly helped everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and especially using that two to three things to focus on, yes. getting really good at it and doing it consistently. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're putting up a lot of listings, you're converting our buyer leads, whether they're our Google pay per click, GGMS leads, or Zillow Flex, which mm -hmm. I know you've been absolutely killing it on as well for, for the buyer side part of your business. And through all of that, we've, we've built you six lead pillars yeah. of your business. Yeah. And I never even really realized I had, yep. Yep. which is, which is awesome. And, and that's the thing is you can't rely on just one lead source. You know, you have to be able to pull from all of them. Um, but again, it, a lot of it is support, support from the whole team. Um, trust me, there's things that everybody doesn't want to do. Picking up the phone is probably the biggest one. Um, but having that support and being like, just, just do it, just do it. Yep. And then you do it and you go, wow, that's not so bad. Well, but it, it's like if we have cheerleaders on the, on the sidelines. Yeah. Well, I think that's the whole cool thing, how we've got, got the group chat set up mm -hmm. for the team, right? There's everyone can celebrate their wins, get mm -hmm. a pat on the back, a high five. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, oh, that worked. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Like, and the next thing, someone else is doing the same thing. Yeah. And it's we're definitely more of a sharing's caring yes. family unit. Yeah. Versus the classic real estate model of I'm an only child. Mm -hmm. I'm not sharing my toys. I'm not going to help you because then you might threaten my business. Mm -hmm. And the way we're looking at it as we're all a cohesive unit and our job is to help each other, grow each other's business. And with that, everyone wins. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of business for everyone. and. Uh, yeah, it's just awesome to see how well everyone's doing, especially yeah. yourself with doing something, coming to a, a small indie brokerage, essentially, from a big box, and then increasing your business by 200%. I mean, yeah. that's, that's huge. And hopefully by the year end, that's going to be a 300% growth yeah. of business since Stein. So there definitely is a method to the madness. I know it's a lot of people get like, oh my God, like the structure, the systems, this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. but it's there for a reason yeah, and absolutely. it's definitely helped scale your business. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I, I can't really can't thank you enough because everything that you've put, you, you've laid the foundation for even a, a new agent coming in. You know, that's, that's the hardest part is being, you know, when you are a new agent coming in, you need that foundation. You need someone to lay it out and say, this is, this is where you start. When, in, baby steps. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't care how, how small they, people think our brokerage is, but we are, we are giants. We really are. Oh, for sure. Look, the amount of business we do as a small cohesive unit yeah. and a small brokerage in general, um, it's huge. I know last year we made real trends, the top 100 large teams in Florida. Granted, we're still small, big picture wise. Mm -hmm. We class as a large team. Um, but to make the top 100 against some pretty big teams that mm -hmm. are bigger than us and we're outperforming them by per agent production mm -hmm. uh, and just what every individual agent's doing. There's no one really here that's just just doing onesie twosies. Right. Right. Your, how many deals have you done this year? Um, up to eight already. Eight, eight closed units and your sale, your average sales price is up, what, nearly $250,000? Yeah. Yeah. So... That's huge. So we've got you finally, instead of chasing your tail, trying to do 30, 40 units a year, uh -huh. we've got you up to doing like eight units year to date, but your average sales price has jumped up so much. Mm -hmm. You're not stressing that you haven't done 20 deals year right. to date, right? Right. That's a good thing. Um, but also if we look at what you did in Q1, your sales volume for Q1 was more than your first year in in the business, right? Mm -hmm. In one quarter, you did more than you did yeah. in a year. Yeah. And your first quarter this year was, I can't remember exactly, but it was, you were almost 35, 40% of what you did last year in one quarter. Yeah. 3.8, my first 3, quarter. 3.8 million sales volume in Q1. Yeah. So, and you're on track to knock out another 
close to three million mm -hmm. right now. So, yeah. I mean, it's huge. What are your favorite lead sources that you like working that you felt you've either gained the most skill from working and or just it's been a new lead source that has had a huge ROI on your business? So my favorite will always be expireds. I, it's, yep. it's one of the toughest nuts to crack, but it's so rewarding, mm -hmm. especially after they've come off such a bad experience and to show them that we're different and things can be different. Yep. Um, that's, that's, and that's something that I, you know, you practice and you get better at and hence getting more listings from that. The other lead source is the Zillow Flex. Yep. And that is a, certainly a different being, you know, a warm transfer. Next thing you know, sometimes within an hour, you're out meeting them. Uh, and, and that's been fantastic because it's really fast tracked and put you in front of more people more quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've done it. A couple of the agents have done it. There's, there's the running joke of who's got the fastest time to an accepted contract. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've put people under contract and accepted in less than 48 hours. Yep. Buyer comes in, phone, appointment set. We learn how to do skilled conversations to get that appointment super quick. Boom, under contracts. Mm -hmm. Like that's huge. And our team, we have a percentage to market that a lot of people are definitely envious of of what we're doing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's huge. And then let's talk about managing all these people, right? So we've got a CRM that I know a lot of people when they first start kind of intimidating. Mm -hmm. They've never really used a CRM specifically yeah. to nurture leads, nurture their database, stay in touch with people. It's like, oh, it's, I don't have enough people. So, you know, it's like, I don't need that. So you don't focus on it until yeah. it's almost too late. We've got people getting comfortable with being uncomfortable with a CRM. And yes. I think that's definitely helped you using the systems that mm -hmm. are in place to keep up to date with everyone that you're contacting to stay top of mind. And that's yeah. how you're getting the listings and buyers are deciding to work with you. Yeah, it, it, CRM, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a tough one. You know, sometimes it is. It's intimidating, overwhelming. But the, the more you grow your business, I realize now how much I really rely on that mm -hmm. because you don't want any of your clients falling through the cracks. You yep. know, so to put them on a nurture or a follow up plan and it's right in front of you, again, going back to processes and procedures that keep us very much on track yep. and kind of dictate our day, but it's perfect. And, and again, the most important thing, picking up the, the phone. phone. <laughs> you can't just rely on an email and a text message going out. You gotta, we gotta have conversations with people. Yeah. So what makes the team and the company beyond different from what you've experienced? Not only just in, from real estate brokerages that you've been in the mm -hmm. past, but just businesses in general from a, from a cultural standpoint that makes us a lot different, but also has the recipe for success. I'd say we're one big happy family. You know, we truly, truly care for each other, watch out for each other, cheer each other on. And that means so much. People don't realize that, but when you have um, somebody to either ask a question to or just say, hey, I'm struggling with something, no one ever feels dumb for asking a question. There's never a stupid question. No. And, you know, we're just, we, we welcome everybody and we, we're all just one big family. And that's one thing that you can never take away and you probably ever find anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I've always been strong on since we started started the business is culture and office culture is huge. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want anyone around the coffee pot being the negative Nancy, mm -hmm. the world's crashing. Like We've always specifically looked for positive people that mm -hmm. are, have, a, or have a growth mindset and are really looking to, to grow their business, but also at the same time, help everyone else along the way. I think that's a very different fit to what everyone else is doing. Right. Um, it's more about, you know, just getting as many people in the door as you yep. can. It's, yep. it's a revolving door, that kind of thing. So we've always tried to stay away from that because it's per been personally my pet peeve mm -hmm. from an industry standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. And no, glad to see that you're doing so well you like i said you were one of the the very first yeah. to join and you know the success that you've had is like yeah. it really does set an example of what other people have the potential to do if mm -hmm. they're willing to do the work yes. and plug and play into the the systems that we've mm -hmm. got in place here
Yeah. No, I, <clears throat> again, I appreciate you, you uh, taking that leap of faith too, because, you know, starting all of this was probably pretty scary for everybody, but we've Absolutely. all grown and learned a long way. And I, I can just imagine what even the end of the year brings and next year and the year after that and the year yeah. after that. Yeah, well, I think the other key thing to look at as well was like how well you're doing, the other agents are doing as an office what what we've been doing in a down market. So, for example, year to date, we're at what we did last year. Mm -hmm. And when I say we, the team, yeah. just the team alone is at 50% of what we did as an office last year. That's not including the other teams that we've got. So it'll be really interesting to see how it works out mm -hmm. and how much market share we've taken mm -hmm. this year in a down market. Yeah. Let's just say we're, we're going to be down 20% in sales, homes to sell this year, with 50% more agents, right? Mm -hmm. But we're gaining market share. We're doing more business. Yeah. So definitely, like I said, the coaching is working. Yes. The dedication of agents like yourself that are willing to pick up the phone, use the systems, and mm -hmm. follow the processes to get results at the end of the day. Yeah. So, yeah. So, thank you for being awesome. Well, thank you for allowing me to be awesome. There we go. <laughs>